All right, sixth graders, now that we are close to completing our perspective drawings, I'm going to shoot this quick video while I'm working on mine so that we can review how to add pencil shading for both shapes with and without echo lines and how to create the ombre effect, again, using colored pencil for those of you who opt to include color into your drawing. What I have on my page right now is a pretty good assortment of shapes and they have filled up enough of the space in this region that I don't see any of the negative space, the empty space, creeping towards the vanishing point. It's all cut off by this cluster of shapes. I will still add some shapes on the outside. So in these areas, I'm gonna continue adding shapes where I can fit them so that the negative space is even more limited. But it's easy to do that because those will all be placed behind shapes that already exist. So for right now, I'm gonna shade this shape first. This shape does not contain echo lines. So my goal is going to be pressing really hard with my pencil so that I achieve a pressure of about a 10 in this area where it neighbors the shape. And then as I get closer and closer to the vanishing point, I'm going to attempt to gradually and very softly allow this tone, this shade to fade out. So it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So if we think in terms of pressure, that would mean that I'm starting with a 10 and then gradually changing to about an eight, which is where I'm at right now. And then changing from an eight to about a seven or a six. And I am moving the pencil back and forth so I can hide these transitions. So again, it seems very seamless. What we don't want to see is something like this, where it instantly changes drastically. That's very obvious. That's not really going to trick our eye into understanding that this is a, a certain type of shading effect. Okay, this shape gets in the way, so I'm making sure to shade right up to this so it looks nice and neat. And now as I get closer and closer to the vanishing point, I'm pressing so lightly, I'm barely using any pressure at all in that area. Here's the first section. I've got four to go for this shape. So I'm going to do this a little quicker, but it'll be the same idea in terms of what pressure I'm using. And you'll probably notice as you work on your drawing that it gets easier as you go. And a lot of that has to do with muscle memory. The fact that your hand and your wrist is sort of learning how hard to press down into the page and then how soft to press down to get this fading out effect. All right, I did two of my sections. These three are gonna be very easy because they're so short. They all get blocked or obstructed by the shape that is to the right. So really all I'm gonna see for each of these is this region where we get a little bit of the idea of the fade out. Something I'm also doing for shapes like this that have multiple uh, edges, multiple lines, I'm leaving a tiny white space where the pencil lines were. So the pencil line looked like that. I'm just leaving a very small amount of white space and that helps to keep these edges visible. Okay, if you don't do that, like I didn't do it for this shape, it'll still work. But that's just something that I'm doing for this one. Two sections to go. And here's my last section. So you see how repetitive this is and how careful I'm being to make sure that my shading looks the same in each of the sections. It always starts really dark and then begins to fade out. I'm gonna make sure that this is nice and clean against that edge. 
Okay, so that's what that looks like. We can see that this shape is in front of this one. It's next to this one. It's shaded just like the others. What I didn't do yet is the surface of either this shape or this shape or this one. I did do both of these surfaces. So what I'm gonna do for those is press very lightly. I'm going to aim for maybe a one on my pressure. And you know you can always get darker. So if one doesn't look like it does the trick, you can always darken to a two. But I would start lighter. So this is what I'm considering to be a one. I'm barely pressing down at all. Really just letting the pencil do the work. And I'm gonna do that same exact thing here and here. Might as well lay all of this out at once. And then it will be tissue time. And I'm gonna use the tissue in order to blend these surfaces so they look very smooth and soft. Okay, those are shaded in. You could see right now that there is some texture. You could see the actual individual lines that the pencil made, and I would like to soften those. So I'm going to use a tissue. I'm gonna wrap it around my finger, and I'm gonna create these gentle circular motions in order to work the paper, uh, work the pencil into the paper, hide any of those lines, because in this case, I don't wanna see those and I'm being especially careful not to blur this edge. We want that edge where it meets the side to be crisp. I don't wanna lose it, so I'm trying to work around that, and we wind up with this for the surface. So we have a very light gray here, and then our shading going back to the vanishing point, just like I did for each of these. I'm gonna blend these out as well, hide the texture, try to achieve just a soft, light gray. I'm losing a little bit of the edge on the left side here, so I'm going to edit that in a moment. I also got a little dark on the inside of the shape, so I'm gonna remove some of the pencil. And you know what? That actually looks pretty good right there. I think the eraser did the trick. And I'm gonna shade or blend this one out. And if this looks too dark, I'm gonna do that same eraser trick. Okay, not bad, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna stamp some of this away. This is a kneaded eraser, so I'm able to stamp the paper with it and it lifts off some of the pencil. Naturally, if it was a regular eraser, I would just rub it back and forth and remove the pencil uh, that way. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. For this area where I'm losing a bit of the edge, I'm going to go back in here and just shade this a little bit more cleanly so it actually stays dark longer and that'll help this shape to remain visible. If I turn this around, you'll see what I mean. That feels a little better to me now. I can see the difference now that I darkened this between these two shapes. I'm gonna use my eraser to clean up the outside of this one, and I think that that is pretty good. So that is the idea for how to add shading for both the sides and the surfaces. Let's jump into the world of color, and then we'll come back to pencil for uh, one of the echo line areas. I've already outlined this lower shape with an aqua or a turquoise Sharpie. So thinking about the color wheel, I wanna choose two colors. First, I'm using the turquoise and then a color that's lighter and brighter that I know will work with it. In this case, I'm going with yellow because on the color wheel, if turquoise is above blue, turquoise is next to green and then green is next to yellow. So I know that these two will make a, uh, a very visually appealing blending effect. I'm going to begin by pressing pretty hard so that my color shows up solid on the paper. So solid means I'm not seeing any of the white of the paper. It's 100% just pure color. 
that's what you're looking at right here. And now as I get closer and closer to the vanishing point, I'm going to do exactly what I did with pencil. I'm going to begin lessening the pressure so that this slowly and softly begins to fade out. And it's actually best if it fades all the way to white. So if I could get so light, this disappears into the white of the paper, that would be the best. So it looks like it's going from turquoise to white. I'm going to do that same thing here, except now you see that the uh, shape that's above it gets in the way. So we're not going to see this go all the way back to the vanishing point. It's just going to start to fade out and then will disappear. I'm going to do that same thing here. I begin solid and then begin fading out. So it looks like it's getting lighter and lighter. And I'll do that same thing here. Okay, what we're looking at right there is a shading effect. Now, we call it shading because it's literally just going from dark to light. The same way this goes from dark to light. This is, it just happens to be in color. When I add the second color, this is going to change into an ombre effect, which is when one color blends into another color, sort of like a sunset. That's a good example of an ombre effect. I'm gonna use my yellow. I'm gonna press pretty hard the entire time because I want this to blend with the aqua. And that's definitely happening here. We're starting to see the yellow take effect. And it becomes especially obvious where the turquoise was getting increasingly lighter. So I'm going to start to press more and more lightly with the yellow so that disappears. I'm going to do the same thing here. So this is blending right into the turquoise. Same thing here. You see how much that yellow makes a really big difference. I want to make sure these all look pretty similar. I think I'm just about at that point. And now that I've done that, rather than using a tissue to blend this out, I'm going to take the turquoise one more time. And now that the yellow is already in there, I'm just adding some turquoise to make it feel like it's a good balance that this is changing yellow at about the halfway point. And that seems to do the trick right there. I'm happy with how that looks. I'm going to do the same for the second one. And the third. And the fourth. Okay, let me hold that up. So that is what this looks like right now. So this has the same ombre effect that this has with orange to yellow, that did with green to yellow. For the surface, I don't wanna use the turquoise because if I use that, it's gonna blend in with the edges uh, a bit too much. Instead, I wanna use a color that's lighter and brighter. I could use yellow, that would work, but I used that here and here. So I'm going to opt to use this this bright orange, it's a yellow orange color. I think this is really gonna stand out against the aqua and it looks like so far it is. I'm filling in the edges solid and then I'm gonna make it a bit lighter at the inside of the shape. So first I'm going around these edges, which is everything that I outlined. I'm gonna erase a little bit right here where there's some markings from the colored pencil Now on the inside, I'm going to start to press more and more lightly so that this looks like it's gradually fading out. Okay, we see that texture that's on here. So now I could do one of two things to blend that out. I could use a lighter, brighter color like yellow, or I could use a white colored pencil in order for uh, smoothing this. I'm gonna use white. This is a very underappreciated colored pencil. I feel like we never talk about white colored pencils, but when you use lighter colors like white, they really work the other colors, like in this case, orange, they work them into the page. 
really smoothly presses them into the surface of the paper. Okay, so now that looks smoother and you can really see the difference between these two, the surface of the shape and the area that goes back to the vanishing point. I'm going to go back to the regular pencil. We'll take a look at two more areas. One is how to go about shading when there are echo lines. And then the last one will be a special effect and it involves how to shade an area on a shape that looks rounded where we could create what looks like a highlight and make it look extra 3D. So I'm going to zoom in a bit because these details are a bit finer. Here are some of my echo lines and I have this shape shooting through another shape. So I'm going to do the same exact thing, same style, I'm starting with about a 10 on my shading. But now I want this to fade away much faster. I want this to fade to white before I get to the next echo line, which is right there. And then once I do that, I'm going to start over again at the echo line, really dark. And then as I work my way towards the vanishing point, towards the next echo line, I get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then I start again. So it becomes a very repetitive process. Okay, that's what that side looks like. I'm going to do the same on this side. So now we see that we have these gaps that are in between, and that's what helps our eye to, um, to still observe that echo line effect. So we see that repetition, and it looks just like what I did here. I had a little more space, but the style is the same. Now here's a, uh, a situation. I have this shape is shooting through this one. Here is the gap where we still see some of the window or the opening of the picture frame. And if I want this shape to stand out, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by filling in the rest of the inside of the window dark. And then I'm going to let this get a bit lighter as I get closer to the shape. So it looks like that, which will help us to see the difference between the two. I would then darken this part. I would go dark to light, dark to light, and then very lightly shade the surface. You know what? I might as well do that. So we could see a, another completed special effect of a shape shooting through a shape. So right now, same idea with the pressure going real dark to less dark to about a medium gray by the time I meet this next shape. All right, so that's what that looks like. Now both of these shapes definitely pop against that edge. We have this edge. The last piece of the puzzle would be the surface here and the surface here. So you know the pressure. I am using a one. I'm gonna to try to keep this as light as I can. And then I'm going to use the tissue for blending purposes. And I'm gonna do the same on the surface right here. See what that looks like. I'm using a clean part of my tissue, so an area that I didn't use for shading and blending already, so there's no graphite on it. 
blending that out. I'm happy with the surface. That looks good. And now I'm very carefully blending out the surface of the picture frame from the shape that it's shooting through. I'm going to need to use my eraser to clean this up a little bit. And then once I do, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I might as well erase right here too. There we go. Okay, finally, that looks nice and clean now. If I zoom out, here's what my entire drawing looks like at the moment. So it's really starting to have that 3D effect. It looks like the page, these shapes are really jumping off of the page. Or we could say the opposite. It looks like the vanishing point is really far away. Like if we were traveling to that point, in a spaceship or in a plane, we'd be going way, 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 way back into the distance. So the last special effect that we'll look at is for a shape that has round edges. And what I like to do for that, what helps to really enhance the 3D effect and make it feel cylindrical in this case, like it has a sense of roundness this way, is I'm going to begin by shading where the line is to the vanishing point. This is going to be really dark like a 10. And then as I work my way up this arch towards the top or the center would be a better way of describing it, this middle area, as I get closer and closer to that area, I'm fading out gradually, lessening my pressure. So this is transitioning from this darker shade here until eventually white. I'm going to do that same thing at the bottom because this is a comfortable angle for my hand right now. It's going to do these three sections at once. So same idea, starting dark and then getting gradually lighter until I wind up at about the middle. Now I got that for two sections. Here's the third. And I have this really tiny little section here that I will do as well. Okay, so that's what that looks like. You're probably thinking, okay, that doesn't look so 3D. So let's add the top, and then we'll see what that adds. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm starting dark. And then as I work my way towards the center, I'm going to gradually lessen the pressure. So we can see that this gets lighter and lighter and lighter until eventually we leave a strip of white space right in the middle. That's going to look like that. And I'm going to try to match that as best as I can in the next space. I want to keep that white strip, what we would call a highlight, in the same area. And what that's going to do is trick our eye into thinking that we're seeing light reflecting off of this circular object. And the light is really bright, and then it gets darker towards the edges. So if I zoom out now, look at how much that shape stands out in this area because it has that special effect. It stands out definitely as much as this one does up here. So I hope, this, hope that this video was helpful for you. We saw how to blend colors, how to do standard shading, shading with echo lines, how to shade the surfaces of objects or how to add colors that are different, and then how to do this special effect. So do your best, have fun with it, and try to make this paper feel as 3D as you can make it.